In the wild, speed is an asset. Hunters use it to ambush. Others in silent attack. The fastest animals on the planet use speed to kill. High-speed cameras and a detailed study of anatomy reveal how they do it. The open plains of the savannah are the perfect playground for speed. But this pursuit of pace has locked both predator and prey into an arms race. A world of action is hiding in the blink of an eye. Colossal armies cross the savannah. Their movements dictated by a much greater power. The weather. The seasonal changes here are dramatic. They set the scene for one of the greatest showcases of speed on the planet. From the familiar big guns, to the unexpected and downright weird. Explosive action slowed down 40 times exposes the drama like never before. For three months a year, the rich volcanic soils of the southern Serengeti host a 12,000 square kilometer dinner party. The annual rains give birth to a carpet of delicious short grass, drawing hundreds of thousands of wildebeest, zebra, gazelle, and other antelope in for the feast. But at this banquet, predators come with dinner plans of their own. With both predator and prey packed in year after year, these open plains have been evolution's testing ground for speed. The faster the predator runs for his dinner, the faster the prey needs to be to escape. Thompson's gazelle are highly strung. You would be too, if 10 million years of evolutionary design and speed was following you around. Each eye can see nearly 180 degrees. But they have to balance their need to eat while times are plenty with their need to keep a lookout. Survival here is all about a head start in the pace race. Gazelles are fast, very fast. When they've got a hungry predator on their tail, they're reaching speeds of 80 kilometers per hour. Their slower moving ancestors would never have been able to survive in this modern speed drenched world. Their secret weapon? Toenails. The development of the hoof in modern antelope, essentially a modified toenail, has enabled the bones of the feet to stay off the ground. Structurally, gazelles now run on their tiptoes, freeing up the rest of the foot bones to lengthen the leg. But they've taken it to the extreme. What was once the bone between the ankle and toes is now as long as the other parts of the leg. 
increasing their height by several inches. Longer legs equals longer stride equals greater speed. And with this new design, the longer back legs are arranged in a permanent sprinter's crouch, allowing the gazelle to explode forward instantly. Useful when the fastest animal on the planet is on the prowl. The cheetah is undisputed king of speed, holding nature's land speed record for 10 million consecutive years. It reaches top speeds of 120 kilometers per hour. But its acceleration is what's truly impressive. It leaves most of the world's fastest supercars in its dust. Ferrari, Lamborghini or McLaren are no match. Zero to 100 in three seconds, or just three strides. Aerodynamics and a lightweight frame enable this astonishing acceleration. Weighing in at only 55 kilograms, its muscles don't have to carry much weight, translating into acceleration instead. And the small head, flattened rib cage, and slender legs minimize air resistance. Once it reaches full throttle, unique design features sustain the speed. The cheetah has an extremely flexible spine, as well as pivoting hips, and shoulder blades that are not attached to the collarbone. This allows the front and rear legs to stretch further apart when fully extended, and move closer together when the feet come under its body, increasing the cheetah's stride length to an amazing 7.5 meters. The cheetah moves so quickly that its feet spend more time in the air than on the ground. Twice during each stride, having all four feet airborne at the same time. In a high-speed chase, the long, muscular tail works as a stabilizing rudder. Even its feet are modified for speed. Unlike other cats, cheetah's foot pads are hard and flat, like tire treads. And the short, blunt claws do not retract completely like lions and leopards. They're designed for grip, like the cleats of a track shoe. These modifications provide the cheetah with increased traction in fast, sharp turns. Of course, an engine must drive this system. The cheetah's enlarged nostrils allow an increase of airflow to the lungs. The respiratory rate climbs to 150 breaths a minute, twice as fast as humans, and the massive heart rapidly pumps oxygenated blood to the muscles. But overheating is a problem for any animal testing limits of speed. Run too fast for too long and your body cooks, especially the brain. The result, cheetah speed comes with limited range. And that's a weakness its prey can exploit. Gazelles have evolved a way to prevent their brains from overheating. Warm blood from the heart is cooled in an enlarged sinus area before it gets to the brain. A cheetah has to stop running when its body and brain reaches 40.5 degrees. 
But a gazelle can keep its brain temperature at 40.5 degrees, even if its body gets much warmer. This ability to keep a cool head allows the gazelle to sustain high speeds for longer than their nemesis, the cheetah. Six seconds into the chase, and this cheetah's insane top speed has already put it on the edge of survival. 12 seconds, its heart is taking serious strain, and its brain temperature is dangerously close to the max. 17 seconds, and it's forced to give up the chase. This cheetah has covered just under a kilometer at top speed. Its heart and brain pushed to the absolute limits. Five more seconds, and it would probably collapse mid-sprint and be dead by the time its body came to a standstill on the dusty plains. So when the heat is on, it's all about timing. Cheetahs have the edge on acceleration and top speed. Gazelles have the edge on sustaining that speed without overheating. It all comes down to who gets a head start. Sharp turns and huge leaps are desperate attempts to stay out of reach long enough to outlast the cheetah. It's down to the wire. Can the cheetah's superior speed close the gap before temperature forces it to stop? Wrong move, or a bit slow off the mark, and the success for the cheetah is an epic fail for the gazelle. But being the fastest animal on Earth can be a curse. A chase leaves it overheating, and its small aerodynamic head design doesn't leave much room for strong jaws. The Serengeti Savannah Speedfest doesn't last long. A few weeks and the isolated thunderstorms dissipate into thin air. The long, dry season is coming. Wildebeest, along with gazelle and zebra, must head north again. Where the grass is not as nutritious, but at least the permanent water sources on the northern plains are more reliable. It won't rain here again for another seven months. Speedy getaway tactics take a back seat. An epic endurance test awaits. For predators, the feast is also over here. The grass is now greener on the other side. Wildebeest literally follow the storm clouds, zigzagging their way to the bleak horizon. Surviving the dry season means heading north at any cost. no matter what the landscape throws at them.
The infamous Mara River is their greatest challenge. The wet season rains have turned this muddy little stream into a frightening obstacle. Deep banks carved by endless wet season floods stop the wildebeest in their tracks. They probably know there's more to this river than meets the eye. The raging waters are the least of their worries. Lurking beneath the surface, ancient beasts are hungry. The arrival of the Great Migration is a chance to deploy both their stealth and their astonishing speed. Within a few days, one and a half million wildebeest have arrived. Their instinct draws them across, but their fear holds them back. The herd builds up along the riverbank in a great mass. It's a numbers game. Jump in with a million of your closest friends and hope that you don't become a statistic. They're desperate to get through as fast as possible. But without solid ground under their feet, they've compromised their speedy getaway tactics. The massive Nile crocodiles have been waiting for this for months. Surprisingly, these massive reptiles are far-sighted underwater, unable to focus on objects close by. But that doesn't stop the massacre. Sensory pits in the scales along the side of the jaw can detect vibrations in the water. So they can still hunt in even the darkest, murkiest rivers. Ambush from the shallows is the croc's normal strategy. Massive muscles in the hind legs and the tail launch the croc out of the water at an incredible 70 kilometers per hour. But they need to be close to strike. Eyes, ears and nostrils on top of the head allow it to hide in centimeters of water. Without warning, it explodes in attack. But here in the Mara, the sneaky lion weight tactics of the crocodilians are abandoned. Dinner is served in the water, and the pickings are easy. Get wet, and you enter the danger zone. Wave after wave of wildebeest continue to crash down the banks. Mass panic drives them forward. 
as invisible predators launch attacks in deeper water. Some crossing points are traps. The bank's too steep for hoofs to climb. The only escape is to swim back again. The waves of wildebeest seem endless. Days become weeks, and still the fat reptilian monsters hunt. Some kill without ever showing their faces. Finally, as the last stragglers of the huge herds take the plunge, the end is in sight. With one last bite, the slaughter ends. The sacrifice has been immense. Thousands are dead. Some drowned, some trampled, and others torn apart by crocodiles. But these large reptiles are not the only river hunters that use speed to kill. Where the waters run still or spill into small lakes, the skimmer has more serene hunting methods. Its beak is unlike any other. In profile, the oversized lower mandible looks strange, but from the front, it is positively bizarre. It's flattened like a pair of scissors designed to slice through the water at high speed on a fish-finding mission. This normally happens at night when fish surface to feed. But for a few weeks a year, they're forced to hunt by day. The demands of parenthood mean eating for two, and there just aren't enough hours in the night to cope. Long, scimitar-shaped wings are aerodynamically designed for flying low and fast, hunting by feel. Cruising at 60 kilometers an hour, they dip their oversized lower mandible into the water. If the submarine blade strikes a fish, it instinctively snaps the beak shut. It's a blind assault at speed. Neither skimmer nor fish know what's hit them until it happens. A scissor move catches the fish sideways in its bill. Fish out of water, and it's all over. But the skimmer isn't top of the food chain in this swamp. The fish eagle rules the sky here, and its dinner bell is ringing too. It launches an attack, flying in at 75 kilometers per hour. Flying low, it gives prey no hint that trouble is coming. It also uses the cover of the papyrus bank to get closer.
Then it pulls its wings in, building speed. The fish see it too late. And the wing shape changes from speed to power mode. It has to climb again with the heavy fish. In the heat of the hunt, only the talons are used. The fish eagle's beak is reserved for eating. The savanna season is coming full cycle. Wildebeest are restless again. The promise of rains in the Serengeti prompts an exodus from the northern plains. The herds, fat with a new generation growing in their bellies, head south. But wherever they go, hungry eyes will always watch. Lions are the heavyweights of the plains, the largest of the savanna carnivores by a long shot. They're huge cats, but they can reach 80 kilometers per hour. The key is to get close. Safety is in numbers. Thousands of eyes keep a lookout for any predator that crosses the line. But wander away from the herd and you become a target. Lions can use their bulk to bring down animals twice their own weight. Lunging for the throat, she bites down on the windpipe, maintaining the grip until the wildebeest stops moving. Death by suffocation. And the migration for this wildebeest is over. Another family of hunters also maintains a territory on the savannas. The morning sunshine gets this gang of meerkats out of their six-foot-deep sleeping burrow. It's time to eat. Every night, they lose 5% of their body weight from shivering, trying to keep warm. They forage communally, but unlike the big cats, they don't share their meals, and they have to watch their backs. They're not top dog on these planes. Their top speed is 30 kilometers per hour, impressive for an animal this size, and useful for escaping danger. Whichever meerkat is best fed at the time goes on sentry duty, while the rest hunt for food. Most of their prey is found underground. They will dig their own body weight in soil in several seconds, just to get a small insect. Sharp front claws are curved and act as shovels, shifting 10 loads a second. An extra eyelid called a nictitating membrane acts as a windshield wiper when dirt flies.
Their far-sighted vision is outstanding. The dark band around their eyes reducing glare from the African sun. But there is a flaw in their design. They struggle to focus on anything within six meters of themselves. So they rely heavily on smell. But sticking your nose first isn't always the best approach. Experienced adults quickly bite the stingers off scorpions before eating this nutritious snack. But these youngsters don't quite know how to handle the speedy tail yet. Instinctively going for the fattest, juiciest part, the sting takes them by surprise, nailing them every time they go in for a killer bite. Meerkats are not immune to all scorpion venom, and some are deadly. This one can't kill, but its lightning-fast tail is about to give this young meerkat an eyeful. A sting to the eye won't leave any permanent damage. It's just a painful life lesson. But they're at their fastest when danger comes from the air. Above, a soaring killer looms. Meet the raptors. Hooked beak, strong, sharp talons, and keen eyesight. The word raptor means seize or plunder. The speed record for savannah birds of prey is well over 300 kilometers per hour. Held by the high altitude hunter, the peregrine falcon. The low altitude operators display a maneuverability at speed that even our ultimate fighter planes can't match. Heavy hitters like the Marshall Eagle, powerful enough to knock an adult man off his feet, target small antelope. Stealth bomber eagle owls and the supersonic low altitude attacks of the yellow billed kites terrify small mammals. They all have eye muscles designed for rapid focus and a high-resolution retina. And a distinctive beak, curved at the tip with sharp cutting edges, sets them apart from other birds. But they don't use this beak to kill. Talons are their lethal weapons. Powerful toe muscles literally crush their prey to death. Similarities to the giant killer claws of the Jurassic era raptors are no coincidence. Birds are the closest living relatives of the dinosaurs. The evolution of feathers enabled them to outmaneuver the pterodactyls and rule the skies in our modern world. But one of these hunters has returned to Earth for its preferred hunting ground. Chanting goshawks are long-legged. They favor a running attack. Goshawks' unusually large claw on their second toe is reminiscent of the curved talons of the Velociraptor. They chase the smallest movements and only use their wings sparingly. Finger-like out-of-flight feathers allow it to fly at stalling speed.
with the best eyesight in the animal kingdom, eight times better than humans, even the most camouflaged insects give themselves away with the slightest movement. This locust falls to killer speed. The arrival of the migration back on the southern Serengeti plains brings out the big guns again. And this time, an even bigger feast is about to be served. The herds are replenishing their lost numbers. And like everything they do, they do it together. Wildebeest, gazelle, and zebra wait until the rains hit the short grass plains before they give birth, even holding their unborn babies inside until the right time. About 80% of the females give birth within the same two to three week period. The plains are soon teeming with babies. As endearing as they are, in the predator's eyes, they're just an easy meal. But the overwhelming numbers create a glut, meaning more calves can survive those vulnerable first few weeks. Wildebeest and zebra calves stick with the herd. Gazelle fawns hide in the grass, motionless. Either way, Within minutes of birth, they must be able to run for their lives. These zebras are making a crucial pit stop for water but it's a dangerous place to be, particularly at this time of year. Mothers of all shapes and sizes have young charges in their care. And these mothers know all too well that unseen predators will ambush their babies. but the zebra see them. So plan B kicks into action. Create chaos and confusion. With teamwork, lions can take down animals weighing almost a ton. Why punch above your weight when you don't have to? Despite the apparent chaos, their target is already selected. is the invisible member of the pride who does the dirty work. She was lying in wait from the start. This close, a short burst of speed is impossible to escape. The rest of the pride drove this young zebra into the perfect ambush. Using their power and speed, lions instinctively work together for a single purpose. Another savannah bruiser doesn't bother stalking. In spite of its reputation as a scavenger, hyenas kill rather than steal most of their food.
This mean machine just struts in, purposefully not concealing itself, just to measure up its prey. The young, the old, the sick, the weak. That's what they're looking for. Spotted hyenas are built for the chase in an entirely different way to cheetahs and lions. In a sprint, they can reach impressive speeds of 60 kilometers per hour, but their endurance is their biggest asset. They can sustain speeds of almost 50 kilometers per hour over a distance of five kilometers running down just about anything to exhaustion. Strong, well-developed neck and forequarters dwarf the rest of their body, giving them their sinister, sloped-back gait. These muscles fuel the staying power in a long-distance run, as well as providing the power to their jaws, a bite force of 360 kilograms more powerful than that of a lion or a tiger, allows them to crush even the biggest bones in their prey. Their remarkable digestive system can dissolve large bones and even teeth in hours. The only thing they can't digest is hair. The mother gazelle desperately tries to distract them. Hyenas often use a tag team approach, rotating in and out as they chase down prey. The frantic speed of the gazelles versus the measured lope of the hyenas. Once within Jaws' reach, it's game over for this young fawn. Hyena clans can number up to 80 individuals. Then there's nothing on the savannah that can stand in their way. Not even the king of beasts. But there is very little fighting going on during baby boomer month. There's plenty to go around. Ten minutes after birth, wildebeest can run, and within days can keep up with the adult herd. In the panicky crowds on the savannah, this youngster has not only lost his mother, but has lost his whole herd. Wildebeest calves will imprint on and follow any large moving object in the absence of mum. Even large predators. These lions can't believe their luck. Their instincts are to chase and kill. It could be full bellies or the childlike need to learn. But these young lions play with their food before killing it. Eventually, hungry or not, the inevitable has to happen. Despite its brave bursts of speed, the calf is doomed by primal feline instincts.
Even in a time of plenty, lions are unable to resist a free lunch. The savannah is a veritable playground for speed. Predators, large and small, each have their own approach. Stealth, strength, teamwork, endurance. But of all the savannah's speed killers, the cheetah wins hands down. On occasion, a band of brothers will even work together to target larger prey. At 110 kilometers per hour, it's a sight to behold. They don't quite have the team planning and coordination that lions have. And their lightweight frame makes the takedown tough, even dangerous. The cheetah is undoubtedly the fastest animal here, by a long shot. It's nature's ultimate speed demon. On this ancient battleground, where speed kills.